Hi there, this is Kerry Hayes, editor of Tourism Update. Uh, today I'm sitting with CEO of SATSA, David Frost. Uh, David, welcome. Yeah, pleasure to be with you, Kerry. So David, last week we wrote an article on SATSA doing a number of workshops across the country to talk about animal interactions. And obviously this is very a very big, hot talking point in South Africa. Uh, it's something that hits social media all the time. It's very contentious. But SATSA is looking at actually doing something about educating the market. And tell us more about the workshops. Thank you, uh, Kiri. It's uh, yeah, I say great to be with you and a great uh, proponent of the spoken word um, when we can get out and get our message to members and uh, non-members alike. Um, in 2017, um, the whole issue of animal interactions really came to the fore, sort of in the middle of the year. Um, one particular establishment had uh, utilised uh, SA Tourism Roadshow platforms to basically um, stand up and say they were the way, the truth and the light in terms of animal interactions and the rest of the industry were dodgy and shouldn't be... Uh, um, uh, done business with. Now, obviously, that was an uncool uh, uh, incident. Um, SA Tourism were particularly concerned about it because it really um, tarnishes our image in terms of how we project ourselves um, to the world. We are world leaders in terms of mainstream conservation issues, but in terms of issues around animal interactions, we 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 got way behind uh, um, the eight ball. Um, we scheduled a session at our 2017 conference. We had a representative panel that discussed the matter. It was incredibly emotive. We had a whole lot of people coming in, both from the, uh, if I could say, from the left-wing position as well as the right-wing position on this. But the upshot was that we got a very strong mandate from the 250 SATSA members that were at the conference that SATSA as a compliance organization should really explore this whole issue and come up with um, a equitable, um, inclusive and a positive way forward in terms of how we look at animal interactions, how we possibly accredit um, establishments um, that play in that space. And on the back of that, that we could then in a positive way go and market this particular uh, part of our product offering um, to the world with confidence um, and in a way that would really sort of uh, um, um, seek to establish ourselves as, 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 as thought and industry leaders. So we got that mandate. Um, we partnered with SA Tourism. Um, funding was procured from the Thompson Collaborative Fund um, and our, our, our um, initiative kicked off uh, late last year, we have a, a SATSA board a committee, which is chaired by Kira Powers, one of the SATSA board members. We have external expertise on that. Um, Grant Thornton BDO is the uh, um, service provider that's been appointed. And the process really, really kicks off in terms of the workshops that are, that are, that are scheduled um, for the next, uh, been around probably over the next two months. Let me just say that the reason that we are doing it in this way is that it would be very easy for us or any other um, organization to simply go and do a cookie cutter approach. The APTA in the UK have developed guidelines. The Dutch tour operators have got guidelines. Various universities have played in the space. But if one simply adopts those without giving people in the industry an opportunity to comment and input from their position, they really um, would be imposed. They wouldn't be organically um, developed. So what our process is really aimed at and the, the format that it would take is that uh, Grant Thornton BDO have done extensive desktop research and they will present at these workshops what the global trends and some of the important um, trajectories that, be, that, 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 that are informing um, how one deals with animal interactions around, around the globe. We will then invite anybody who attends these workshops, and we really invite, they're open to anybody, SATSA members, non-SATSA members alike, please come along and have your say. 
you know, you may play in that space, you may do business with people who play play in the animal interaction space, but it's important that your voice is heard. So, you know, oral submissions at the uh, at the uh, workshops, but you're also welcome to make written submissions as well and to send them through. What would happen at the end of this process is those get co- those will get collated and a draft set of. Uh, of, of, of guidelines which may, and, and bearing in mind we are at the moment absolutely agnostic about what this, what will emerge out of this process. It's an open-ended process. It may be that we come up with, with, with quite strict accreditation guidelines where, you know, uh, people have to go in and actually accredit animal interaction establishments. It may be a far more loose set of virtual guidelines. It may be that we Um, come out of this process and we adopt some of the existing um, uh, parameters that other organizations have developed but we don't know but the important point is that we need to do this in an organic way so we have a robust set of South African based guidelines that are based in our realities in our job creation um, environment together with ethical behavior so I think once we've done this it's going to be a positive outcome for everybody. It will put us in a position to be able to market this important part of our of our product offering internationally with confidence. And I think just by the response that we have received from that one article, the industry wants to have their say. They want to get involved. And as you've said, getting that input and feedback from ground level, the people that work with, with this industry day in, day out, that is the absolute gold that you're going to be taking into these consultative sessions. No, absolutely, Kerry. I mean, you know, we, you know, everybody who, you know, when we've communicated the process has been very supportive that we are, you know, stepping into the breach here. Um, and people just simply want to know when, when the process is, 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 is going to get going. It's been slightly delayed, but, you know, we've, we've, we've dotted all the I's, crossed all the T's. It's been a, it's been a very uh, uh, transparent process. And, yeah, we're just looking, looking uh, forward to getting, getting the ball rolling and, and, and putting us in a position to, uh, to come back with, with um, a clear way forward that everybody has confidence in. And we really do encourage you to participate. I mean, it's, it's your voice that's going to be heard. So, David, I'm going to get some contact details from you afterwards, which we'll put into the article. Uh, if you want to ask any questions or have any recommendations that you can send through to SATSA, and uh, they will get back to you on that. And also, we will reprint the or republish the dates of the different sessions, where they're going to be held, times, etc. So, you know exactly where and when to take part in this very powerful initiative. Cool. Then, honestly, you guys have started off with a bang, David. Satsa has kicked in, we're not even in February yet, although it's around the corner, and so much is happening. What else is on the cards for Satsa this year? Well, Kerry, as they say, no rest for the wicked. Um, so, one of the big initiatives that we are very proud of last year was the lot of background work was done due diligence and it's been it it's really uh, quite proud to announce um the merger of Satec into into Satsa. So we need to bed down that process and that's one of the big things we're looking at this year. We need to bring these two organizations together to streamline it. Um, but not losing sight of the very important identity that the SATEC members bring bring to the party. I mean, it's they represent youth travel. Um, it's an it's a massively important sector. Um, uh, a huge amount of, of 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 our international rivals that come into the country are between eighteen and thirty four. These are the people who are a lot more intrepid about travelling, who are not um, destabilised with, uh, um, you know articles around safety and and perceptions around that these are the intrepid uh, travelers it's if we can get them in when they're young they'll come back um, time and time again as repeaters so um, that's an important uh, 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 cornerstone for satsa this year is 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 taking that merger forward then we continue to work on some of the big exogenous issues that bedevil our industry so issues around the visa regime, unabridged birth certificates, um, issues to do with the National Public Transport Regulator. But I'm very pleased to be able to report back that we 
have an absolute renaissance um, that has t- taken place within the Tourism Business Council of South Africa, a new chairman, Blackie Kamani of Tourvest, who has really steered us in, in, a, in an incredibly short space of time in a very positive um, di- um, direction. The new CEO at the TVCSA is doing an amazing job. So we're working together with the TVCSA to really make quite discernible progress in 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 these in these areas um and you know that's something that's really exciting i think that you know we've we've as satsa had to plow quite a lone furrow from time to time um in terms of tackling these issues but it's really nice that we are able to do this with the gravitas and the um inclusive umbrella um, nature that the tourism business council you know brings to the party um, and then linked to that is, is, is a very important um, area that we really want to, we want to sort of take away from pure discussion and, and, and put into operation this year. And that is a proper practical partnership with SA Tourism so that we synergize both the public sector resources and the public sector resources, sorry, the private sector resources and, and SA Tourism's resources at the point of inception that we both know for example, what the strategy in the UK for the next three years is. We all, we, we all input into that and we can all move forward um, uh, collectively. And if we can do that across our main source markets and, 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 and really be on the same page, I think it's going to augur well for, for increased um, arrivals. Uh, another area that uh, we look forward to operation, uh, operationalizing this year, there's been quite a lot of talk about it in the past three or four years, and that is to really get the self-regulation of adventure tourism off the ground. But at the same time, all the um, amazing marketing opportunities that we can um, harness onto that. Um, adventure tourism is, 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 we've often said, our sleeping giant. We've got 10 times the product that New Zealand has. They've put themselves on the map. They've had huge success. And we have this incredible array of, of, of stunning adventure tourism product around the country, most of which, when you think about it, takes place outside cities. So it's a rural base, the job opportunities, the empowerment opportunities, opportunities for inclusive growth are just abound. So we're hoping to secure the funding for that, and we can kick that off later this year. And then the final... Um, uh, you know, issue that just to sort of share with, share with your uh, with your readers is Satsa turns fifty this year, so it's our it's our half century. We'll be raising raising our bats, and hopefully going to have a you know quite a quite an interesting Satsa conference this year. We we are going to tweak the format a little bit, make it um, I think hopefully a lot more sort of interesting, informative, but at the same time a hell of a lot more fun. So hopefully get some news out about that in the next month. Brilliant. Well, a lot on the cards for this year for SATSA. We certainly can't wait to see how tourism is going to evolve and mold with all these big initiatives because, I mean, this is big stuff happening for tourism in South Africa. Thank you, Kiri. You know, look forward, look forward to it and uh, look forward to working, working with our amazing members to, to, to make all these good things happen. Great. Thank you very much, David, for chatting to us. And uh, please do drop any comments or queries to the uh, contact details that we provided uh, regarding the Animal Interactions workshops. And we look forward to seeing you there.